Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode and today we talk about sketching in public places and how to do that with more confidence. But before we get on to that, we just want to say a quick thank you to Marsha Furman who shared one of her Art Journal January pages in one of her videos on YouTube. And she also gave our podcast a mention, which we always really appreciate. So thank you, Marsha. And if you want to check out her channel, you can find her at Art by Marsha Furman. Also, Tara, I can't go on without mentioning Deb Sane and her hilarious ukulele video. You've obviously seen those, haven't you? Yeah, she's brilliant. Yeah. I laughed my head off when I saw that. And Deb did a fantastic impression of my accent. (laughs) She made me me sound very posh. (laughs) You need to give her hello to Deb. Hello, Deb. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) It seems that Deb has been learning to play um, the ukulele. Um, And I can't believe how good she is already because I don't think she's been doing it very long, has she? I don't think so. And actually that she manages to sing along with it as well. I know. I I try to play the guitar, but trying to do one thing is enough without singing along as well. I know. Uh, It just goes to show that, doesn't it? We can really learn anything as long as we really want to. And she's doing a great job, but I'm so uh, enjoying her videos, I have to say. Um, But on to other things. As always, thank you so much to everyone who's been sharing their work with us on social media. And some particular work that's caught my attention. Well, it's really hard to choose, isn't it? I mean, there's just so much. But we've got um, Lila Pappenberg Ingham. Is that right? Lila Pappingberg Ingham. She's sure. she's doing the February Faces Challenge, um, but she's using clay. <clears throat> so I was so impressed when I saw her first sculpted face. It was really quirky. And have you seen those? Yes, I've seen them. Love them. Yeah. Belinda Larmore, again, February Faces. She did a beautiful coloured pencil drawing on toned paper. That's how she's been doing it. It's been absolutely lovely watching her her work um also i love the faces that tracy jukes has been drawing they are really characterful and quirky have you seen those ones uh, you can have to remind me what tracy's look like well they're kind of almost sort of uh, they're more characterful and sort of um car- I, I don't want to say cartoony but kind of but they're really you have to look them up on go on facebook okay. and go yeah, on there's to so tracy many good ones i forget who's are. who's yeah exactly and georgina scott she's taken part in the february fables challenge and she started by posting the last paragraph of her book so she already knows where her story needs to go and I thought that was a great idea and actually Yardell Perkins is back he's also doing the February fables challenge again and he did that last year didn't he and um published his book so yeah I'm looking forward to seeing how that progresses quite a few people are also doing the finger painting challenge too and I've got to say that that challenge I think was sort of an idea sparked by Bradley Birkin's suggestion and it's proving to be going down quite well I think so that was a really good idea Bradley what about you Tara what's caught your eye well, I like you. I was going to give a mention to Yardell, who's back. Uh, like you said, he's doing a sequel, isn't he, to what he wrote last year? Which yeah. is great. Um, I think he's hoping to publish, self-publish that as a book by the end of it as well. And then there's Barbara J. Maybe, and she's been doing some straight line hatch drawn faces. I don't know if you've seen those. But I just really like the style of the hatch, and she's done them almost like a vertical line. Yeah, I think I have seen those. Yeah. Yeah, and then Cheryl Martin, I know, I know we mentioned Cheryl because she's sort of one of our sort of, she's been, I think they've been in the group, she's every year now. Yeah. Um, but she's been doing these faces and they've improved in leaps and bounds. The last few she's done, I just like, wow, she has improved so much. I thought they were brilliant. Um, and then also Jobian on Instagram. She's created some lovely watercolour faces that I really like. And, do you know, I've noticed that I go onto Instagram and I see this face and I suddenly twig, it's the same person on a group because they're using like, um, you know, a tag, some, what do you call it? What do you call your sort of Instagram name? 
Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Mine's really they're... boring. Mine's just Sandra Dot Busby or something like that. But some people have some really random names, don't they? Yeah, and then I sort of say, oh, that's the same person. But yeah, which is uh, uh, yeah. really good. Yeah, no, because I know what you mean now. What, yeah, they, so their Instagram name is different than their Facebook yeah. name. Mm. And unless you've actually clicked on their profile and saw, saw their actual name, you don't know it's the same person. I only click when I see their art. But it's interesting, um, isn't it? Going back to quickly what you said then about, you know, Cheryl being with us a year and there's lots of other members have also been with us from the very, very start, I think. And it's really interesting because we've been able to watch how they, they've improved over that time. And it is incredible, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it almost seems to with Cheryl, I think, it's almost like in this last month or so, it's really clicked yeah. on the faces. Thing. She's been trying to draw them for so long. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she she drew these... They were like kind of caricature cartoony ones. And I thought, well, you know, wow, you can just really see the difference. Yeah. Amazing. But I know lots has been happening with you. So are you going to share what's new? Well, yeah, I, I've come back from my holiday yeah. <laughs> in Cuba. And that was really, really nice. I've only actually been back a few days when we record this. So, um, yeah, I've, I've still got lines. I've still got a white bum, just in case anyone wanted to know. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be gone in no time. I'll be back to neon blue very shortly, I'm sure. <laughs> it's funny, though, isn't it? You lay, there, lay in the sun and get a tan. You come home and because it's a winter holiday, you have to cover everything up apart from your head because it's so flipping cold here. <laughs> yeah, well, we go to Devon anyway, so you don't really get the tan. <laughs> We've just booked another holiday, though. We booked a holiday to Thailand in December. <laughs> So, yeah yeah I'll be, I'm really looking forward to that but yes no the holiday in Cuba was fantastic and um Havana was beautiful of every artist dream the buildings but the, in the last day um we were there and we got asked to sort of go back to our rooms and basically stay in with the, the curtains shut after a certain time because they thought lots of really strong winds were going to hit we didn't bother we, me and Paul were going to go down the beach and, <laughs> and have a look but um but yeah some people did and um actually it was to me it was a bit like a really really windy day in Britain um but obviously they know what could happen don't they yeah. and we went um home the following day and um, a really rare tornado had ripped through a part of Havana and we saw quite a lot of the destruction that it left behind on the way. So that was quite sad. Lots of palm trees down and things like that. And the trouble is with those Havana buildings, they're all sort of dilapidated and falling down. So <clears throat> they're, they're, people were killed. It was really bad, actually. But um, they are spending a lot of money, I think, in Cuba now trying to rejuvenate Havana. But it was fascinating. We went to Hemingway's house. That was amazing. Um, I must say, I don't particularly rate the food in Cuba, though. It wasn't. Do you think very it nice. depends where you go, or do you think that's um, just? <clears throat> I think Cuba in general, but it's but it's a poor country, isn't it? So they do what they can with what they have. So that's just part of the holiday, isn't it? It's part yeah. of their culture, I suppose. You just have to, you know, go with it. But yeah, the food was. Well, like I said on Facebook, interesting. <laughs> I didn't put on loads of weight, put it that way. <laughs> Normally I would. <laughs> but I'd... me a picture and ask me if you had. <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> one. I, I nearly sent you a picture of my white bum and I oh, said, that. I thought, oh, I'll spare her, I'll spare her. <laughs> but I came away with some inspiration for my next painting and um, bought home a, a prop, couple of props to bring home which I brought over there so I'm not going to say what it is yet you might guess actually but um so I'm hoping that I'll make a start on setting that up um over the next few days really get that sort of um I just want to get to that, I like getting to that stage where I know what I'm painting and you, you got know. a new um, light bulb didn't you <clears throat> yes my yeah. parents bought me a new um I mean, my dad actually originally made me one and it's really good, but that's a very big one. And actually I, I needed a small one because the big one is great for big setups. But when you're just using, doing something small, it lets in too much light at the front. So, and this one is brilliant. Really, really good. I really rate it actually. Um, so just explain what it's like. It's like a box with yeah. lights on both sides, isn't it? And then you put whatever you're, you want to light in it. Well, this one's brilliant. It, it comes almost, it looks almost like a laptop case, only bigger, sort of bigger and square. So it, it folds down flat, completely flat. And then you open it up and it's got these <clears throat> just almost like um, a tent. But it's just a square box with um, white 
like material all around it so that you can shine lights through the material um, and it comes with a, a set of warm lights and a set of cool lights so you can adjust your lighting as you want it um, and it's a really good way of well, basically manipulating the light to how you want it in your still life setup. So if you want a warm light coming from one direction, a cool from another, or just warm or whatever. And um, yeah, so I'm, 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 I've got all that set up ready. And it comes with this little um, camera stand at the front. So you can, and it, this camera stand's got even a um, little thing for your phone. So you can either put a camera on the end or you can hold your phone on the end so you can take a picture with that it's really good i'm so impressed with it I really am so that's going to be really good so i can't wait to get i've got i'm waiting for one more little thing to come through the post so i can make my setup so hopefully that'll come today or tomorrow and um yeah then it'll be ordering the next new canvas so that'll be exciting so what about sketching did you do any sketching <clears throat> all day oh yeah i did actually um I did some sketching mainly of people around the pool. Surprising, actually, uh, just how much people move when they're sunbathing, though. So one of my pages is just full of bits of people, <laughs> like the odd <laughs> arm. I think there's even a toe on there somewhere <laughs> and a, a foot. And yeah. So, you know, you look at people and think, oh, this is, this is ideal. Everyone's just laying around and reading books. But actually, as soon as you start drawing, you can guarantee a waiter will come along with a drink and they'll suddenly sit up or somebody will come along and stand right next to them or in front of them. Um, so Paul actually made a really handy model because he kept still on demand. So a lot of my sketches were of him. And I have to say, I did get approached by a couple of people, um, but they seemed to kind of love what I was doing, so it was all good. So I wasn't sort of um, thinking, oh, my God, I've got to... Did anyone spot you drawing them? You're in, you know, no, you're I wouldn't have appreciated it if I'd have spotted someone drawing me. <laughs> <laughs> what, in your bikini? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, they didn't, actually, but um, they spotted me drawing Paul. So I got a couple of people sort of coming up and one man sort of put his head over my shoulder and gave me the thumbs up. Paul was asleep sunbathing and he was he was like really excited about the fact I was drawing. He kept coming back and having a look. And um, <laughs> then the waitress came over and she sort of realised what I was doing. So she was watching as well for a bit. But you no, know, they seemed to really love it. So it was all it was all good. It was fine. Yeah. Um, Did you use your new watercolour? Do you know what? I didn't. I knew no. you were going to ask me that, and yeah. I didn't. I did. I just used my pen and and my sketchbook. But then you can always add colour, can't you, afterwards? Yeah. So, yeah. no, I didn't. And I've realised, actually, that sketching is something... Because I didn't do any for the first week, and Paul kept saying to me, how come you haven't sketched? And I said, <clears throat> when I'm at home, I use sketching as a tool to wind down. And I suppose when I was in the first week of holiday, I really didn't need to wind down. So I wasn't sort of feeling that urge as I normally would. But come the next week, the following week, I was starting to feel that urge. I was missing drawing. So yeah. then I started um, picking up and, you know, doing some sketches. So um, You're yeah. too busy with a rum in your hand anyway, weren't you? The oh, first week, yeah, bladdered the first, yeah. bladdered for two weeks, really. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What's new with you? Well, nothing as exciting as you, but <clears throat> I've been taking part in February Faces, which um, has just kicked off. What are we today? When we're recording, it's the 6th of February now, so yeah. I've done five faces so far, but I'm trying to be a bit more experimental. And, and I was having this battle with myself, and I'm sure everybody has this, where because you're sharing work, you know that, basically, you know if you do a sketch, this is you, Sandra, if you do a sketch in pencil, or yeah. even in your new purple pen, <laughs> of, of a face you know it's going to be reasonable don't you you know it's yeah. going to be a reasonably good sketch and you're not going to be embarrassed to share that probably no but then if you decide you're going to do something a bit experimental you don't know what's going to happen yeah so it's I had that battle myself where I know if I draw I do something and use my brush pens and over a bit of collage I know I can draw a decent face but if I try drawing weird ways and experimenting I don't know if this is going to work because so you're something... leaving your comfort zone, aren't you? That's yeah, I'm why. leaving my comfort zone. And then I've already said I'm going to share it because obviously it's only fair if I'm doing it as well. I should be sharing it in the group because we're encouraging people to do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so you're thinking I could end up sharing a complete disaster um, or I'd have to draw another face very quickly just to make up for it. But I've decided I'm going to do it. So, yeah, I've been trying to do different things. So I've been drawing with um, skewers 
and cotton buds and using the actual ink dropper tool to sort of draw with. And, and I've actually, I've, I've really enjoyed it, but I've literally not known what's going to happen. But I think that makes it more fun. And I think you can really surprise yourself, can't you, when you do that? I mean, I remember painting that portrait of that man, the man with all the kind of folds and wrinkles in his face, which was amazing to paint. But I I paint glass. I paint marbles. I paint, you know, drinks and things like that and still life. So that was something I haven't done for years. And if I hadn't have had a go, I wouldn't have realised I could actually do it. (laughs) So sometimes I think it's really important to do exactly that experiment and try something new. And I think it keeps the... Well, it might, it's quite enjoyable, isn't it, doing something new? Yeah, and I also think if you do something a little bit unconventional, mm. like for me, like drawing with a skewer is not... <laughs> not it's not your classic painting <laughs> tool, is it? And um, some, somebody actually made me laugh, actually, in the group. Someone said, oh, this is it's interesting. I'll have to look this up. Because she obviously thought I'd... Um, found an online video you know where someone was dipping a skewer in an ink because I was using acrylic inks right and I, and I said oh this isn't an online you know tutorial this is because I cooked kebabs last week because <laughs> <laughs> Kevin bought a big packet of skewers and I thought oh I'll try that <laughs> so uh, yeah but but it's been fun and I've actually quite liked the marks it's made it's it's been sort of really interesting but because I've got all these loose bits of paper now so I need a way I need to get a folder or some some way of keeping them all together just you know for now um and also I keep banging on about this but I've been absolutely loving making the videos we're making oh I know which we're actually... are completely bonkers <laughs> We, we were talking about this just before we started recording, weren't we? And I said, we're going to get crucified on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we are. Isn't it supposed the, to be the meanest, person, meanest place on the planet? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the one you sent me the other day, which I'm not going to tell everybody what it is, but it completely surprised me. And I, because I, I'd written, we, we, we're both writing them, aren't we? Sort of yeah. what's going to happen in them. But I'd written this, but then you did luckily your own little take on it. And when I saw it, I just practically wet myself. And every time I watch it to edit it, I just I'm not I'm practically crying. Well, what it's you know? it's quite funny because, like you say, we're making these videos, and they are going to be useful, helpful videos. But yeah. um, you know, we like to do it in our own style, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing about us is normal, I don't think. But um, when I realise what Tara's done to the video, or Tara will see what I've done, and we're both just laughing. It's so funny. It's just yeah. the most stupid things in the world, but. Uh, they are going to be useful and helpful. Yeah, you know? I think what's good as well is, so you're doing more of the um, how to draw, I'd say, yeah. Technical stuff, Yeah, maybe. the technical stuff. And then I'm doing more of the, here's an idea for something you could try. Because I think that sort of fits us. Yeah, more, and, and also, you know, your cartoony drawings and things like that are fantastic. And that's not what I do. So I, I wouldn't want to teach that because no, I, I can't. But you're really good at sort of drawing things in detail and doing faces and how things work and proportions and stuff like that, aren't you? Well, I don't know about really good, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I mean, we just we're going to be sharing what we know. Yeah. And and it, I suppose it's a bit like when you go to school. Do you remember there'd be the really boring teachers? They always smelt of lofts. <laughs> <laughs> Did we smell of or... lofts? <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, that musty sort of inside a book smell you know they're old, old history yeah. teachers <laughs> or there's there's the ones that make the classes fun and yeah. I always used to learn a lot more in those classes because I would enjoy sitting in them <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah so what do we smell like then I didn't smell you last time we, we met I'll have to make a point of smelling you next time we go to London <laughs> hopefully not of attics <laughs> Anyway, where, where are we? I don't even know. Yeah, where you're we're supposed on. to be introducing something or other. I can't remember. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. <laughs> Perhaps the episode. We should yeah, get on to the it. subject. Yeah. yeah, so we recently asked on our social media if there was any particular subject that you'd like us to talk about in, in an episode. And um, Andrea England Art on Instagram, she suggested that she'd like a podcast episode on sketching in public. And Actually, it came quite soon after our sketching trip to London in December last year. So we thought, actually, that now would be the perfect time to talk about it and share some of our ideas on how you, as well, can feel more confident about doing it. Well, um, in November. We went in November. 
Was it November? <laughs> I think so. Oh, maybe it was November. Yeah. It, it was very late November then yeah. because I know that the Harrods had the Christmas lights all up outside yeah. and things like that. So it was very, very late last year. Um, but we'll also be sharing some tips today uh, that some of you suggested to us on social media as well. Yeah, so the first thing we think you should consider is that most people won't actually take any notice of you. You know, remember that people are more interested in what they're doing than what you are. So in general, they want to just get on with it, but they might be curious and just want to have a little peek as they go past. And if they do talk to you, you never know, you might actually find that they're interesting. I know um, when I went out sketching in October, you know, we did that challenge and I only did it for a little while, but... Um, I had quite a few people, local people, come and chat to me. And actually, they were all really nice and actually quite interesting. And I was drawing one person's house. I was standing in the churchyard of the village I live in. And I was actually drawing a woman's house. And she actually sort of popped in the churchyard just to be nice because she sees me walking around the village anyway. Um, but, yeah, she was just – she didn't even really try and look, but she just was had a quick chat with me. So people in general are nice anyway. They, they're just curious. They are, yeah. Like you say, people tend not to approach anyway, don't they, quite honestly. Um, it's quite unlikely it'll happen, but occasionally it does. And what I find as well is when it's a, a sketch I'm happy with, I don't mind. <laughs> when it's a sketch I'm really not happy with, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I was sketching in the airport. I was sketching Paul's bottle of beer in the airport. And um, for some reason, I just could not. I, I don't know why we were in this we went in one of the lounges but we went in the downstairs one it had no windows it was there was hardly anyone in there I really there was nothing inspiring I in the end I thought oh I'll just draw that bottle of beer and actually I was more interested in the bubbles forming around the edge but I started with the the actual bottle itself and I just wasn't happy with it at all and the guy the waiter came over and said oh are you a budding artist I was like no and I quickly shut the book and then sat on it <laughs> But I, if it had been a really good sketch, I'd have gone, oh, well, you know, do you want to look? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, you know, at the end of that, it's natural. It's human nature, isn't it? But, you know, artists tend not to approach at all because um, we found that, didn't we, in um, in that v &A museum because they know what it's like to be approached, so they try not to. Um, but the people who are more likely to approach, they are... Well, they do tend to be people who either don't draw at all but wish they could or they're beginners, in which case what you think is bad, they'll probably think is great anyway. And the only way to get more confident at sketching in public is to take the first step and actually do it. And I would suggest trying what myself and Tara did, which was to book out an entire day specifically just to go sketching. And um, I, I find that starting is definitely the hardest part but you'll find that once you start you just will not want to stop and we did it together which worked really well for us but you don't have to do that you could always go on your own I've got um, Marley Mass on Instagram and she said she says I sometimes sketch in public but I don't feel very comfortable only when I get in the flow then I forget everything around me and that's really true that's exactly what happened to me in London at the beginning of the day I really wasn't comfortable at all but by the end of it i I'd lost that sort of fear and I just really couldn't get enough and I didn't really care so much if if it went wrong. Yeah, I think you and me are quite different like that as well, aren't we? Cuz you're you're much more comfortable drawing people in you know in real. Yeah. In real. In real. <laughs> <What does that laughs> mean? Um, than from, I am Whereas from life. I, yeah, that's that's the word. Whereas I'm happy, I don't mind so much of drawing the buildings and you know things. Um, yeah, very different I just, like that. I just wish they'd stand still. Yeah, I really do. I drew. I once drew my sister-in-law for my brother-in-law's birthday, and she wanted me to do a life drawing of her, which I did. And she what, a nude one. Yeah, very tastefully nude. Um, but but for him, just for I him. I can't really. imagine sitting drawing someone yeah. you know naked. Yeah, no, oh, I know her very well. It was just like sitting there having a chat with a cup of tea. She just didn't have clothes on, but I wasn't really. <laughs> that wasn't really in my head at the time. Yeah. And um, she, bless her, she sat for four hours. Oh, we did have a break. Yeah, had a break for half an hour to go and have some lunch. And um, and that was really lovely, being able to draw someone from life and they sit still for four hours. It was great. And she absolutely loved it. I mean, she was so happy with it. Um, Is it on the wall? Her wall. Probably her, I imagine her bedroom wall, I think. Probably not, not in her <laughs> don't want that in downstairs room, do you? toilet or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, so that was great. But, yeah, when you're sketching people from life, you just have to accept that you're only going to get their character. You're not going to get a likeness particularly. You're just going to get 
a person's gestures or, you know, I think that's the thing, isn't it? it the pre when you put the pressure on yourself of, oh, it's got to look like them. Actually, as a sketch, it really hasn't. Yeah. And I think that's the whole thing. Don't put too much pressure on. Remember, you're sketching, not drawing. So don't try and create a work of art, especially not the first few times you go out. Otherwise, your nerves really will kick in. Just try and enjoy it. And the more you do, the better you'll get, and you'll get much less precious about it. And Tony Lee actually says, was it Tony Lay? Is that, how do you pronounce that? Do you know? I would say Lay, but I don't know. Okay. Tony Lay. L-E-Y. All... That's yeah. Yeah. You're also not looking to create a masterpiece. You're looking to convey an emotion, mood or physicality, like emotion in a walk. Don't erase. Don't overthink. Don't attempt anything even close to perfection. Sum up, draw an instrument on the paper and just do it. Simpler is better. You can always go back and clean things up or make a better version of something you really like later on. But when you're in public, just pay attention and learn that less is often more, much more. Oh, I so agree that less is more. I really do. Um, I find that as soon as I start fiddling around with a sketch, it just ruins it straight away. So, And I also think um, less is more when it comes to the art materials that you take with you as well. And I've mentioned before that, um, you know, I've been sketching in the past where I've taken an entire rucksack full of every possible material that I might need. And actually, that was a mistake and, and much more of a hindrance, I think, than a help. I found that by having too much choice, I just felt completely overwhelmed and I ended up not doing anything at all. So when we went to London, I purposely went with little more than a biro and a sketchbook because I knew that if I didn't have all of those choices, then I'd have no excuse um, not to just get on with it. And, and that works so much better for me because it takes away a lot of the initial decision making. And as we said before, I took my watercolour brush pens to Cuba. And again, it was just a very simple choice. Do I use them or don't I? And no. <laughs> <laughs> so just take the minimum amount of materials you that you need to make a sketch and one that can easily fit into a handbag or even a pocket. Um, that wouldn't work for me because I do prefer a bigger sketchbook. But you know, all you need is a pen. And I'd, I'd highly suggest taking a pen rather than a pencil because that straight away eliminates the need to take an eraser and a sharpener. And also think about what kind of sketchbook is the easiest for you to use. I mean, the last thing you want to feel is uncomfortable with your materials. And Tara, I know that you like a ring-bound sketch, don't you? Because it's a lot easier to hold when you're sketching outdoors than a hard I, Yeah, I don't back. like it. I don't like it for at home. I actually do not like ring bound sketchbooks in no. general, but I think when you're out, they're much easier. But I don't know, am I allowed to tell your ring bound sketchbook story? <laughs> oh, the reason why I'm not so keen, even yeah. though I have actually got one and I yeah. do I do use it. I did use it in yeah. Um, yeah. And are we allowed to am I allowed to tell them what you did in London? <laughs> <laughs> well I haven't got much choice now, have I? No. So come on, tell the story. Well, we, <laughs> I happened to say to Tara one day, a little story that happened to me and why I don't particularly like ring bound sketches. And one of the reasons I don't particularly like taking ring bound sketches out with me is because, well, we all know what a woman's handbag is like, don't we? You stuff a ring bound sketchbook in a, a woman's handbag and you never know what's going to come out stuck in the rings and I've had my keys stuck in there before and that was a nightmare because the actual ring got stuck in the ring so it took me about 10 minutes to try and unravel it um I've had sort of I don't know all sorts of tissues all sorts of things and um yeah one one time there was a tampon <laughs> in the ring stuck in the rings and um, when I got to London with, with Tara I think you thought I was absolutely mad didn't you I pulled yeah. my ring bound sketchbook out and um what fell out of a tampon but she deliberately done it because she thought it would be funny <laughs> we're gonna lose all of our listeners we are aren't we lose all of our listeners it, it, yeah but it was demonstrating something that had actually <laughs> genuinely really happened to me once before yes. so it was funny but it was actually that did happen so yeah, yeah i don't like taking ring bound <laughs> sketchbooks out with me because they're irritating they get things stuck in them but yes yeah. um I think when I took my ring bound sketchbook to London, I actually put it in a cardboard sort of folder <laughs> to stop it happening. <laughs> I have to say that when I did do that stunt, I was not expecting it to roll three foot across the floor <laughs> no, <laughs> in the what? middle of a cafe. <laughs> no, that wasn't good, was it? <laughs> but oh, um, do you think there's anybody still listening? 
No, it's very no. quiet, isn't it? I think it's very quiet. There's an yeah. echo. There's yeah. an echo. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we, but anyway, take take whatever works for you, but don't take one that you'll be precious about and afraid to use. And this is something else I will say quickly now is that I've realised that most of the sketches I've done that I find are the best ones are the ones where I've I've sketched on bits of paper where. I'm not expecting it to be great. I don't care. I, it's a piece of scrap paper ripped out from somewhere and they always turn out well. And the minute I open a pristine sketchbook and think, oh, a lovely white page, they never look so good. So, yeah, I'll have to get a scrapbook, won't I? Yeah, it's that pressure thing again, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We had another Instagram message from that one girl 108 on Instagram. She says, have a small sketchbook to keep close to you and within your bubble. And yeah, that's definitely another good tip. Yeah, it's quite a good way to sort of hide yourself away, isn't it, with a small yeah. sketchbook? Yeah. And like you said, um, that thing about the pen, I also think, you know, if you get that pen, it forces you to commit to the drawing. I think it also speeds you up, doesn't it? Because you can't hesitate and you can't go back over things. And if you're thinking of applying colour, like you were saying, do something that makes it easy for yourself. So you could look at watercolour pencils or brush pencils for speed. Oh, I absolutely love brush pens. I used them when we went down to London, didn't I? Just um, yeah. take one of those, what are, the other, what are they called? Those water-filled brushes. I don't know what you call them. No, but they no. are, they've got like a little, little reservoir, haven't yeah. they, of, of water. You squeeze it and there's a brush on the end. So yes, just I can't remember what one they're of called. Those. I, I, I love those. I mean, I wouldn't generally, if I was just going sketching, say, in, in a cafe or, or wherever, I'd just normally take a pen. But I did take those with me. And, and because I could sit down, it's much easier if you can obviously sit down and, um, and use those. And remember, you don't even have to add colour on locations. Like you were saying, you can just get the basics down and add that later. And I remember as a teenager, I used to go out and sketch. Well, I would add colour notes. Have you ever done that? No. So I might be thinking of maybe making a watercolour sort of painting later. So I'd just write write on it like, you know, deep brown or ready brown, that sort of thing, all these little notes. Because back then, do you remember, you used to have those little 35 millimetre cameras. You'd take a photo and mine always, you have to wait like two weeks to get them back and they'd be shocking. Do you remember that? Oh, the yeah, the, the head would be missing. Yeah. But first of all, you've got to wait till you fill the whole film up before you can even yeah. take it. So sometimes it would be like months before you get to see the photo. So so back then it was a good way. But even now you could still do that. You can take yourself a photo, but obviously the colours aren't always that true. But if you just put yourself a few notes, you know, really bright blue or, or whatever, I think that sort of really helps as well. And if you, you do worry about people approaching you, there's always uh, more ways to make that less likely to happen because I think that's what most people seem to worry about don't you oh definitely yeah being spotted and one suggestion would be to wear headphones because that generally discourages people from approaching you and you don't even have to be listening to anything um and a few people on social messenger uh, social messenger social media suggested the same thing so pam vale branch says wearing visible headphones helps when i want to be out but i don't want to interact glaze the horizon says listening to music really helps me zone out into my little space and somehow it just makes me focus on whatever I'm trying to sketch. Also, I don't mind the stares and weird looks because the chances are the people are just interested and are loving your work. Yeah, and I think the key word Pam said was wearing visible headphones, one that are quite obvious because, yeah, people, I, I wouldn't approach someone who's got their headphones on, would you? No, you might sort of peek, have a little peek as you walk yeah. past, but mm. you wouldn't try and engage them in conversation mm. or anything, would you? And actually, if you were listening to something, you'd probably be unaware of people if they were peeking anyway, because you'd just be lost in whatever you're listening to and doing. Yeah. And also, like when you're in a cafe or somewhere similar, you could work with your back to the wall. So people can't kind of wander behind you and look at what you're doing, look over your shoulder. And Sadia VT, who's on Instagram, she says, regarding being watched, if I can sit somewhere where no one can approach me behind, I'm usually comfortable. So she thinks exactly the same thing. And then also... Maybe try doing some quick time sketches to loosen you up. And it also means you don't have to stand in one space for too long. I know you hate those, Sandra, but you won't yeah. draw too much attention because you, you're only there for like five minutes or something and you move on. And if people do persist and watch you for too long, you can politely ask them to go away. Like I had to in London, I, and I've said this before, do you remember that woman you, you didn't yeah. even notice? No. But she was literally 
almost leaning on my knees with her child sort of looking over oh no I had to say you know I'm I'm really sorry but I can't draw while you're standing there and then she said oh sorry and sort of wandered off so yeah you've got to do it haven't you yeah do that the time sketches don't work for me because I can almost guarantee if I do a quick time sketch with a chunky marker like you gave me in one minute, it will be terrible. <laughs> so if I if somebody does spot me, then I guarantee it's going to be awful. So I rather I prefer doing a sketch and taking my time over it because then if at least if somebody does see it, it's either nowhere near finished or it's reasonably okay. <laughs> I, I just draw and run, you see. I draw so yeah. quickly they don't have a chance to have a look and then I move on. But you you said, didn't you, that you felt I was more confident in sketching in a cafe than you were. Yes, definitely. And, and actually it's right um, what... Uh, Sadia VT? Yeah, said. She says, you know, if no one can approach me from behind and that's that's quite right because yeah I, I am comfortable in sketching in a cafe but I have to be against a wall as long as I can see what's going on around me I'm fine but I, I, I hate the idea of somebody looking over my shoulder without me realizing but I, I mean I've rarely been approached um, at all and so the reality is that it's it's very unlikely it'll happen anyway and even if somebody does have a look you know you're, you're hardly likely to see them again anyway so it really doesn't matter and in a way like you said, it would be really good to be able to politely tell someone that you really don't want to be disturbed, but that's something I don't think I'd be very good at. I'd feel really rude. I'm really like terrible. Like, oh, well, yeah, but sometimes you have to be, but I'm the complete opposite. In fact, I've nearly been murdered twice because of that actual what? problem. Well, not actually. I mean, I'm oh. exaggerating. <laughs> okay, let me change that. I've I'm actually surprised I haven't been murdered because of that very problem because the situations I've got myself into, very vulnerable situations that I've got myself into because I feel too rude if I say, oh, no. Uh, I'll tell you an example. So we we live... I'm really diverting here, isn't it? Do you want to hear this story? <laughs> yeah, or am I just... You can always cut it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so behind us, um, we back onto some woods. So I'm often walking the dog in the woods behind our house. Yeah. And um, we, I, I tended to do the same route. The dog knew the route inside out. I knew the route inside out. And there's a, there was a guy who was talking to me. He really he loved the dog he was like oh what a lovely dog what have you got blah 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 and he said oh, where, where are you going he said I'll, I'll walk along and he had a dog as well yeah so he wasn't just like a strange man just walking but um and he was probably you know late 60s I suppose something like that anyway I was I said oh I'm going down here he said oh have you not been up this way before and I said oh no I don't know what's up there and he said oh it's really beautiful this way you should he said I'll show you and my first thought was I don't have a clue who you are I'm in the woods and I'm about to be led into some (laughs) undergrowth by a man and I feel that if I say no I'd feel like I was being rude (laughs) no no. (laughs) so I found myself saying oh uh um okay now Sherlock you okay I've got my dog with me Sherlock will do anything for a belly rub if this oh. guy said, if, if I rub your belly, can I bash your mum over the head? He'd go, yeah, that's fine, just rub my no, belly. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> but so I found myself I'm so stupid. I mean, I'm, I'm 47 years old. I mean, back then I was about 45, I think. So it's not like I'm, you know, young, yeah. young, and, young and stupid. Naive. Yeah. You're just stupid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm stupid because I just thought, uh, what I should have said to him is, well, you know, that sounds lovely. I will try that one day, but actually I don't know you, so perhaps I ought not to. But instead I found myself saying, okay, and I followed this guy further and further into this um, track that I'd never been to. There was these really dark woods down there that are so dark because they are not felled at all, ever. Yeah. And I, we were walking towards this woods and I just thought, oh, my God, I'm going to be murdered today. I know I'm oh not I'm going to... No. But I still couldn't bring myself to just turn around <laughs> because I just still felt it would be so rude to say to him, I don't want to go any further. Anyway, suddenly he made a right turn. Yeah. And he seemed... He, he was chatting and everything. Yeah. Um, but suddenly he made a right turn and I sort of followed and, and it got lighter and lighter and eventually we found our way back to where we'd started from. 
And meanwhile, we'd saw lots of deer and all sorts. So yeah. he, he was very genuine. Oh, but right. afterwards, I thought, what a stupid thing to do, because yeah. that could have been anyone. And I'll tell you what else happened. I'll give you one other very quick story as well. I was looking for the deer, because we often see deer down our woods. I was walking along, and there was a man coming towards me the other way, and he had a camera. He didn't have a dog with him or anything. He had a camera. And I was just out, he just happened to be along when I was... Um, looking out for these deer. He said, oh, are you looking for the deer? He said, they're over there. I said, oh, are they? I said, I can't see them. And he said, have a look through my camera. Um, anyway, but what he actually did is he put the camera strap around my neck. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I, I just felt like, say, I don't need the camera strap around my neck, but again, I, I just thought it would sound rude. <laughs> so, so I stand in there in this... In this woods, completely alone with a random man who's got a strap round my neck, <laughs> pointing me in a complete other, other direction so I'd look the other way. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. <laughs> I hope I make it through this one alive. Anyway, again, I did. And I did see the deer, but... And he was yeah. genuine, but you don't know that. Yeah, so yeah. be blunt. Yeah. Learn to be should blunt. I, because... Should I teach you? Yeah, you need to teach me some bluntness. You teach I... me some tact and I'll teach you some blunt. <laughs> But, but, you know, whether you feel more comfortable in sketching alone or sketching with someone else is, is very much down to personal choice, I think. You might feel less self-conscious if you go alone at first. I don't think you should go alone. <laughs> Not after hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're probably right. Um, as long as you're in somewhere public, I suppose. But um, Or if you, you know, if you go with someone else who enjoys sketching, who's at the same level as you, that might be a, another good thing to, to try this way you could even model for each other and I know you drew me Tara didn't you while we were sketching in the museum in London yeah. and the great thing about that is that you know that you can ask them to stay in the same position for a bit longer if you need to so Tara oh, you I knew you'd said be to there me, ages <laughs> <laughs> you're quite safe now if I try if I tried to sketch you if I tried to sketch you sketching you did oh, I, you did I'd that have... very unflattering one of me in my head down <laughs> and my double chin <laughs> I, no, normally it would just be a puff of wind because you you've been there and gone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can ask if you're with someone, you can ask them to stay in the same position if you need to. Like I did for Paul when I was sketching him, he was asleep, but then he woke up just at a moment where I was just refining a couple of bits, and I went, "Go back to sleep." <laughs> so he did a couple willfully. of bits. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Not. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, let's not drag this <laughs> no, episode any further it. down to the gutter than it already's gone. <laughs> um. So, but if you, whereas, you know, when you're trying to sketch an unsuspecting member of the public, you know, like I said, they'll often just get up and walk away at the most inconvenient moment. So, um, you know, personally, I'm actually more comfortable with sketching either alone or on a, um, a sketching trip with another artist. Um, apart from Paul, I wouldn't want to sketch on a trip out with a non-artist because I'd feel the need to rush in case they got bored. But Paul actually likes watching me sketch, so I don't have that trouble with him. And I know you sketch um, Kevin a lot, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I'd much prefer to sketch someone else, um, like we did in London. Or, I mean, I think you're the only person I've ever been out sketching with. Ah, oh, I'm honoured. Yeah. I'm honoured. Although, look, a friend of mine who doesn't sketch, I have said I'll teach her how to draw. You know, you know, Lisa. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we might try that sometime. But, I, yeah, me and Kevin, I, I quite happy. I feel really comfortable sitting with Kevin somewhere drawing. And he doesn't mind because he'll either read a paper, like if we're in a cafe or a pub or something, he'll read the newspaper or he's happy looking at sport. Cause he's mad on sport. So he's happy looking through his phone at the sport. And, and then, but I am, I do have a problem with people, which I'll talk about later. But also good places to go or somewhere like where there are other people drawing like you know we're in the VA, VA that you were saying there was tons of artists yeah. already drawing there so you don't feel like you're unusual there's so many people doing it already it's much more normal and yeah. somewhere like that drawing static things like statues you've kind of got the benefit of drawing people but they're not moving that's what I found I liked drawing the statues yeah were... perfect wasn't it yeah, yeah. So there are some sketching groups that you could look into, such as Urban Sketchers. Um, and otherwise, maybe you could even start your own local sketching group if there isn't one already in your area. And most towns these days um, have a Facebook community group, which would be the perfect place to find other people who might be interested in joining you for a regular trip out sketching. Tara, you meet Meetup as well, haven't you? Have you ever been on Meetup? No. There's a site called meetup.com where you can either join 
it's not just sketching it's all different types of hobbies and just socializing basically um so you could start your own one there you pay a little bit each month to you know to start one Uh, or you could join an existing group if there is one i say there's all sorts that go on on there has your town got a community page uh we've got a village um page yeah a group like on facebook yeah 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 do they all moan yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Kevin said he might have to because he recently joined here he wasn't on there for ages and I said oh you might as well go on there so he joined he says I don't know if I can stand it because he said they all moan so much oh it's awful if anybody um, went on the Facebook um, page for our town you'd yeah. think what a miserable bunch honest to god I, some of the things that they put on there I mean I've ne- I don't think I've posted on it I think maybe I might have asked where I could find a good window clean or something like that I yeah. don't know but um yeah it's awful people putting photographs up of a car that's parked an inch over a yellow line and things like that yeah. who's this yeah. <laughs> and somebody the other day put would the person who threw a microwave into my hedge like to come back right now and pick it up blah 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 and and like Paul said he said it's not like that person's going to read that and go oh, okay, I better go and pick it yeah, up, is it? Yeah. But people just rant on it and it drives me bonkers. It's entertaining, though, at the same time. So somehow I can't quite bring myself to leave the group because it's yeah. too entertaining. But, yeah, it's it doesn't so weird, really... isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. I have thought, you know, I have thought about going on there and starting a sketching group. The trouble is I don't want to be the one that has to organise it because you know time what it's consuming, like time consuming isn't it well yeah and also you'll get so you organize something and then you know that half the people won't show yeah and then it's then you've got to, because you're the one that organized it you've got to kind of set the agenda of what you're doing or mm, it's, it's you could that... just say i'm going to be in costa coffee at 10 a.m on sunday morning to yeah. sketch is there if there's any other artists out there who fancy joining me that's where i'll be yeah. So it's as simple and as complicated as you, make, as you make it. You can either make it into a proper big group or you can just use it to maybe get someone to think, oh, I wonder what, you know, who she is. Yeah, I'd like to sketch. And well, maybe I'll let you do that friends. first. I don't need to. I've got you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Candice Rutherford on social media. She says, start by going with a group. It's more inspirational. Choose other shy artist friends and make a play date out of it. And that's exactly what we did, isn't it, Tara? Yeah, well, I wouldn't have got it a play date, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good places to draw. Now that's what we want to think about. And you might want to start by going to quiet places such as woods, but don't go on your own. And well, or, don't allow a random man to wrap a no, strap around your neck. <laughs> no. <laughs> or a quiet park bench. I think you wrote that. A quiet park <laughs> bench or in a library. And work, work your way up to busier places as your confidence grows. You might even try sketching from inside the car first. And I did this um, in October, and it was actually because it was peeing it down with rain. So I sat in the car, had the wipers on, and, uh, yeah, just sat with my sketch pad kind of leaning up against the um, steering wheel. And that went okay. It wasn't a bad drawing with a biro, because that's all I had on me. Um, and if you like drawing buildings, go somewhere quiet, like a, you know, a small village or the edge of a town. I went to a small village near where I live and oh, the only people you can encounter there is like the odd walker who's sort of walking down a lane. And if you want to go somewhere inside, start by choosing something really non-daunting to draw. So you know how you draw a beer bottle, draw something yeah. like that or a coffee cup in a cafe or an ornament. So I've drawn little lights that were in sort of the window of the pub, things like that. Something really, really non-daunting and where no one's really going to notice what you're doing. Because I often see people that post pictures of their breakfast or they go to a cafe. I think one of our group did actually recently, didn't they? It was her first time sketching outside. I can't remember who it was, but I think she sketched some croissants and her coffee. Oh, yeah. And I I just don't know how people do that because I don't really think too much about food. But if it's in front of my face, then I'm like, I, I want to eat it. <laughs> I don't want to draw it. I just want to eat it. And if it's something like warm, like a crumpy or something, and you, I just think, I don't know. And you see these people doing full-on sketches of their... Um, of their like fried breakfast do you think oh it must have gone cold yeah. do you yeah. think they take a photo they must i do take a wonder photo. sometimes I, yeah. I do wonder so- sometimes if they might but um i'm sure i'm sure there are people that out there that just are that good and that quick that they just knock something up but um yeah it's not how i work i suppose but um yeah choose 
somewhere at the end of the day where you feel most comfortable. So that's different for different people. You might want to go out of town where you're unlikely to see anyone you know. And this way, if anyone does approach you and you don't like your own work, then you know you're not going to see them again anyway. Other people might feel more comfortable sketching in places they're very familiar with. And Christy C. Neff, she says, I'm still a big chicken, but I do sketch at work. Now, I can't get inspired to sketch at work. Um, I really, really can't. But I do know a lot of people that do do that, you know, calculator and phone and whatnot. Well, she's been doing, um, I don't know if you've seen recently, some little doodles. And she's really into drawing faces, kind of women's faces with quite big, big eyes. She likes to draw mermaids as well. Yeah. So yeah. So she's been doing loads of those. And some of them are just on like notebook paper, you know, a line mm. notebook paper. But they're really nice. Oh, Yeah. Oh, I love that. But I'm, I mean, when I say at work, I'm, I'm a, I was assuming she meant sketching things around her at work. Oh, I don't think so. I think she oh. doodles, you know. What oh, she that's different. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, because I was going to say there's nothing inspiring around me at work. No. <laughs> Some lever arch folders and, <laughs> you know, I don't really want to bring that into my creative life, really. Cheryl Martin, I draw in church while listening to the music and the sermon. I take a mechanical pencil and a very small 4x4 drawing book and just draw who and what I see. It's very calming. Others see me draw and it gives me confidence to draw in the park, etc. Yeah, so, so going back to drawing people, and, and I've said before that I'm still quite intimidated by drawing people because I'm always, always worried they're going to spot me. But if you are worried you're going to be spotted, say by someone in a cafe, now this was your idea, See if there's somewhere with a mirror where you can sit looking in the mirror and draw them from that rather than actually looking at them directly. So then they've got absolutely no idea that you're drawing them because you're drawing their reflection. And then also choose places where people are likely to be preoccupied and not moving around too much. So one suggestion might be a library. If someone's reading, they're engaged in their book and they're much less likely to notice you. Yeah, and I found that when I was on the train home from London. And the train is a really good place because often people are just staring at their phones or um, out of the window or reading or better still asleep. And when I was on the way home from London, I sketched people on the entire journey home from there, you know, and then there was a boy, a young boy. I think he was probably about 12 and he was really cute. He kind of had this little pink cap on and he was adorable. I was watching him thinking, I've got to I've got to sketch you. The thing with children is they move around a lot more than adults do, but they are actually usually completely oblivious to everything going on around them. So they, they actually can make good subjects for that reason. I've got Judy Bellini here. She says, I sketch when I can. I sketch people on my short train ride. People in a good conversation usually don't notice what I'm doing. I've also sketched when I'm out alone. Other walkers generally ignore me. Occasionally people do ask to see what I'm doing and surprisingly many say, I wish I had the courage. So my advice is just to sketch if you have the urge and keep going. Yeah, I mean, I love those sketches you did on the train. They were so nice. I didn't sketch at all on there. But the one, I really liked the girl and I especially liked as well that um, guy you'd got asleep. Oh, he, he yeah, so he good. was wearing his headphones and he was just... Um, the girl I drew on the way, she was just reading her book. That was the first sketch in the book, wasn't it? And that was on, I drew yeah. her on the way to London. And that was great because she was she was just literally staring at her book and, and didn't hardly move. So that was really great, apart from to turn a page. Um, the guy who, on the way back, yeah, he was asleep wearing his headphones and that was great because obviously he had no idea what I was doing. So he, I wasn't going to be spotted. I saw a tip on artist Lynn Chapman's blog, lynnchapman.blogspot.com. She says she gets a table seat on the train, then puts her bag on the table and her sketchbook on the lap. This means it's really difficult to see what she's doing. And her sketches, they look absolutely amazing. You've got to go check out her blog. Oh, I'll definitely I'll do that after this. Fantastic. And something that we should have done in London, and we were really stupid not to, was to draw the busker. Do you remember we saw that busker near the yeah. end? Yeah. And we just throw a few quid in his pot at the end because, of course, he doesn't mind that people are watching him because that's what he's kind of there for. He's he's already putting himself out there. So we should have definitely done that. And, of course, although he's moving, he's got the same sort of movements sort of carrying on. Because we tried to draw the ice, ice skaters, which was an absolute nightmare, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. You know, I want to try that again, but I think I'm going to, take a completely different approach next time what approach then well i think it was a case of have a look and they're all just going around and around really fast on their ice skates and it's kind of like oh quick capture that person but they, you can't no. it's impossible what you kind of need to do i think really because what i t what i was finding i was doing was catching a, a pair of legs and then filling in the blanks well that doesn't work um 
I think next time I would find a pair of legs and draw them and then wait until the next pair they came round again or someone in a similar position came round yeah. and then just almost put several people into one person, if you know what I mean, yeah. just to make someone. I don't know. Well, I had a disaster, but, didn't I? Because all I did was, oh, here's a head, here's head and shoulders. Oops. I think, yeah, but I yeah. think that's better than trying to just make it up as you go along. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But personally, I think booking out a whole day solely to sketch in public places is a good idea, as I've said before. And, and if you can do that maybe once a month, that'd be even better. You'll find that the more you do, the more you want to do, the less anxious you'll feel about it. And as I said before, when we left London, I was still sketching on the way home. And it's honestly hard to stop once you're in the zone. It's as hard to stop, I think, as it is to start. So starting really is the hardest part. So if you can just get past that hurdle, then you're on your way. It is odd, isn't it, the starting thing? I mean, mm. I often think that's like... That's like anything, isn't it? To do our videos, it's like, oh god, to actually make the first one, it was a nightmare, and and even even just like drawing something, say say I'm going to draw a face later. Is if I think I'm going to experiment, the thing in my head is more the planning it. I'm so busy planning it. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? That I put off to actually doing it. It's odd. Yeah, yeah. I think as well. It's when we went to London. I remember meeting you in the coffee shop. Um saying hello saying our hellos and chat 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 and then saying right shall we sketch that person out the window and I think you said should we get a coffee first <laughs> but it's because I I know that that's the hardest thing the hardest hurdle is picking up and I know I thought god it would be so easy for us to just end up chatting the whole day and not doing any sketching because I just know that we know what I'm like talking <laughs> once I start I can't stop um but you know, that's, that is a problem for me, it's just that starting. But as I say, when I was on my way home, I, I was disappointed that I was going to have to soon stop. It was, it was so lovely to have that feeling that you don't want to put your pen down, yeah. you know. But as well as the answers we've already read out from our listeners, thank you for all the other suggestions we had. We had lots though, didn't we, Tara? We, yeah, we tons sort of, of them. We've got a few more here. Um, Mary Beth Akers. She says, ooh, interesting. I feel much more comfortable sketching than just sitting there. I think this is less related to being in public than it is just being happy in my happy place. Back to work tomorrow, looking forward to adding your podcast to my lunch break. So hello, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> if hello. you're listening, I hope we're not making you late back to work. <laughs> no. And I think that's really interesting because I kind of know what she means in a way because I really don't like being somewhere public on my own as in I, I you know don't mind wandering down the street or whatever but I don't like sitting in the cafe drinking coffee on my own well you don't see anyone doing it really do you when yeah, you go you into do a cafe see a few people doing it yeah but they're normally reading a paper or reading their phone yeah. or talking you know is there anything but very rarely you see someone just looking around with a coffee in their hand yeah um I try to do that sometimes because Years and years ago, I think I was about 22, I went to Greece. I went to Greece on my own for two weeks. Before I went to Greece on my own, I would never in a million years have walked into a McDonald's or a cafe or anything like that and sat down and been comfortable. When I came back, I've never had that problem. That's weird, isn't it? Because I had to do, I had to do that every day. I had to sit in a restaurant and eat on my own yeah. and, and do everything on my own. I did meet a family actually. They, well, they kind of met me, <laughs> and uh, and I think for the first week I was on my own. The second week I wasn't. But yeah, I mean, just get it's just getting used to it. That's all it is, and not being afraid to just look around and absorb what's around you, rather than having to have your face in a phone. But uh, ideally, yes, yeah, sketch definitely. Well, I've got Christina Flett, and she says, go with friends or join a local sketch group, just like we've suggested, haven't we, before? Yeah, and Nick Tate West, she says, drawing in public helps my anxiety. I just draw patterns, though, while people may think I'm drawing them or the scenery. It's a point, isn't it? I never thought about that. Some some people obviously don't like being outside and out in, no. in, people, in public. Bethany Kelly, sitting somewhere unfamiliar, for example, a favourite coffee shop or park bench, if you're already at ease in your surroundings, it's often easier to relax into your sketching. Coffee shops in particular are great as often everyone around you is busy enough not to notice what you're doing. And if you've ordered something, it gives you something to do with your hands if you need to put your sketch down for a minute, if you're having a bit of a wobble in confidence. See, I'm not the only one that suggested a park bench. 
<clears throat> just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got lucky 13. Don't be afraid of people staring. They don't know you and they don't care. If they come up to you, it's usually because they're interested in art. And it's it's sadly true, really. We all think everyone's interesting in what we're doing. But the reality is nobody is interested in anything other than what they're doing because you're nothing to do with them. They've never met you. They're really, you know, not interested. Well, even if they do look, they've forgotten. Within two minutes of walking away from you, they've yeah. forgotten about it, haven't they? I mean, yeah, if you really think about it logically, when you're sitting on a bus or sitting on a train or sitting on a park bench or whatever, you know, every single person you're looking at, they're busy doing their own thing. They, they're really not thinking, I wonder what that girl over there is doing, because they've got their own busy lives, you know. That's, that's the thing. Braille Arts. Last week I was sketching a woman talking into her mobile. When she discovered me, she stood up and looked for another seat where I couldn't see her anymore. Now I'm a little shy again. I have a small sketchbook, but I think it isn't small enough. You know, there's always going to be people who don't want to be drawn but don't worry if that happens just move on to someone else you know it's it's not likely that you're going to come across that but if you do don't don't let it get to you just just move on to the next person well I've had I had the same thing happen well I think she moved because of that so I was I was drawing someone she was sitting there and she had I was actually kind of drawing a scene behind her as well but I was putting her in in the front and she had earphones on big kind of earphones I should have known shouldn't I that that means (laughs) don't look at me (laughs) but um Uh, I was I was sitting with Kevin, so I was sitting drawing her, and then she got up and she moved to a different seat. Well, she moved further in the cafe, so I couldn't see her. But I thought, well, she could have been horrible to me and said, "Can you stop drawing me?" But you know, she just did it subtly, really, didn't she? She's moved away. Basically, I've got the message, and that's it. So it doesn't matter see, that I, much. I, as an artist, if I found out, if I thought somebody was sketching me, I'd try and sit as still as I could, Would you? and then I'd say, "Have you finished yet?" Oh. And I wouldn't ask to look. <laughs> That's because, you know... You know what it's we, like. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, anyway, um, we uh, need to read out now the answers to our oh, previous yes. question. We do. And that question we- was by Deb Sane, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and it was, if you could create with two famous creators, one living and the other dead, who would they be and why? So we have Angela Murphy, the artist I would love to create with is an artist named Rutt from South Africa and with the late Solar Myth Wolfing from Germany. I hope I've pronounced those right. Both paint angels but have completely different styles. I feel really drawn to their work. I've got Belinda Lamour. She says Rembrandt first because he was such a great portrait painter. Living person would be John Williams who has written many amazing film scores. And Deb Sain. She says Ansel Adams to absorb his mastery of composition and his incredible eye that sees, finds such richness in black and white and his darkroom work using chemicals and knowing camera settings. Living would be Deb Weirs, my kind of artist because her work is unlike anyone else's I've seen. Imaginative, unique and colourful. Find her on Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. I also love her willingness to take time to respond to questions. I have to admit Deb shared her work and I absolutely loved it, that Deb Weirs. Oh, I'll have to have a look Fantastic, at that. Fantastic, yeah. Then we've got, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this either, Queenie, and I'm sure this should be some sort of Roman numeral, but I'm not quite sure. So it's Queenie, X-C-V-I-I. If I could create with two famous creatives, the deceased one would be Norman Rockwell. He was a master illustrator whose style was so unique that it blended realism and illustration. People argue today that his work is either illustrations or paintings. The living creative I would like to create with would be Rebecca Sugar, the creator of a hit cartoon that I love dearly called Steven Universe. Her storytelling, world building and unique style has drawn me into the rich world she created. I would love to create with both these greats simply to learn from them so I can improve upon my illustration and storytelling. Cheryl Pond. First one is Paul Klee because I love his wit and experimentation and use of colour and I could listen to his violin. Then the second is Shelley Mossman, a recent portrait photographer who I love her photos. Right, Tracy Fletcher King, I think Matisse for an artist who is no longer with us because he just kept creating no matter what. He immersed himself in art every minute. I'd like to know more about that. For an artist who is alive, I would say Cressida Campbell. Her woodblocks are stunning and her book is my favourite inspiration. She captures Australian light so perfectly it's ridiculous. I'd love to catch the Australian light, but I'd have to be able to go there first. (laughs) 
I've got um, John Munro, songwriting with John Lennon and art with Banksy. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So who who would your choices be? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. How about you? I'm so I'm so uncultured. I just know <laughs> that I see an artist and oh, I like that, but I never really. I don't have loads of artist names I like, if that makes sense. No, no. How about you? I'm not sure. Danny Gregory, I'm really not probably. sure. Well, I, I, yeah, I have put Danny Gregory because I'd love to sit in his studio and have fun sketching with Danny Gregory. That would be great. Yeah. That would be awesome. But dead, not sure. There's a lady called Mary Pratt, actually. She was quite well known in Canada, I think. Oh, by the way, it turns out I speak fluent Canadian. Do you know that? I found that out in Cuba. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, they speak they speak Spanish over there, but there's loads of Canadians in Cuba. Yeah. And um yeah, apparently I wow. speak Canadian really well. Yeah. <laughs> and American. I can speak American and Australian. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Mary Pratt, she she was well known in in Canada, um, and I think she died quite recently, but I really love her stuff. Um Danny Gregory and, and Mary Pratt are complete polar opposites, but yeah, I like them f- yeah. in different ways for different reasons. Anyway, we have a brand new question. Uh, The question today is, the creativity genie wants to grant you one creative wish. What would it be? So one rule is you're not allowed to wish for more wishes. No, definitely. (laughs) Okay, so before we go, we just want to quickly remind you of the March challenges we've got coming up. Um, The challenges we have are Quick Kick March. So we're challenging you to photograph something from nature every day throughout the month of March. You could photograph trees and plants or waterfalls, rocks, birds that visit your garden or the wildlife around you. And this challenge can really help you learn to be more aware of the beauty that is all around us. Sometimes we forget to stop and smell the roses. I think it's stop to take the time to notice it. You just ad well, lib. yeah. I ad I lib, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm better at ad libbing. Yeah. And we've got Kick Time March. Now, Kick Time are our monthly challenges that are designed for those creatives who would prefer to sink their teeth into one big project over the whole month rather than take parts in lots of little ones. We give you a prompt each month and then you can use that to inspire a story, a poem, a piece of art, music, animation, anything you like. And this one, next month's prompt, is artificial. And we've got March Mixed Media. So we're challenging you to create a piece of mixed media art every day throughout the month of March. The object here is to get you experimenting and creating some interesting work that you may otherwise have been afraid to try. And then we've got Five Minute March. Oh, that was so popular last year, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was a great one because who can't fit five minutes into their day? Yeah, I did that one. I loved it. We are challenging you... I have to say that because that's how you always do it, to make one, <laughs> one five-minute sketch every single day throughout the month of March. <laughs> month of March. <laughs> throughout the month of March. <laughs> month of March. Uh, this challenge is particularly suitable for those who have a tendency to overwork their sketches or those like who me? have limited time. Do you think anybody like can understand what I was just saying? <laughs> Basically, a five-minute sketch every day yeah. throughout the month of yeah. March. But I have to say, you know, some people I think are a bit confused and think they've got to do all the challenges, but no, you pick one. Pick one that you like yeah. and you like the idea of. Five Minute March is perfect for those people like me who have no time and, um, you know, uh, yeah, just very limited uh, time and tendency to overwork sketches, and also, which is my problem. Do you think, like, last year what we found was people would start like, oh, I can't do hardly anything in five minutes. But mm. by the end of the month, they were doing so much more than the beginning. They'd really, really improved. We were getting some quite good drawings. And some, sometimes like at the end, I was finding that I, five minutes was almost too long. Yeah, I remember you saying that. You said, I don't yeah. know what to do. It was really strange. Yeah, really but, strange. But if that does happen, all you have to do Stop. is... Well, yeah, or you can drop your time down. So, right, now it's going to be a four-minute. Yeah, or just stop when you finish, as long as it's within the five minutes. But you won't stop, will you? Um, well, if I know a five-minute alarm is just about to go off, then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was quite good. Okay. So that's about it, isn't it? Um, as always, you can tweet your answers at Kit Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which, by the way, if you haven't joined, I suggest you do. We'll put the question up there as well and also on our Facebook 
page. And of course, uh, you can also find us on Instagram at Kicking the Creatives. A quick reminder of that question. The creative genie wants to grant you one creative wish. What would it be? So don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the podcast, we'd love it if you just leave us a little review on iTunes, even if it's just a quick star rating. So that's it. We will be back soon when we will be interviewing Stuart Hill. Now Stuart is an ex-army officer who suffered a brain injury in Afghanistan and had to be discharged from the army. And he's now made a new life for himself as an artist and an inspirational speaker. And it really is a must listen to episode. His story is so inspiring and moving. So don't miss that one. Uh, So that's it. That's it. We will see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. Martin, I draw in church while listening to the music and semen. I take a mag- semen, sermon, <laughs> sermon, <laughs> sermon. Did I say, did I say semen? <laughs> oh God, that's definitely a blooper. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Ca- I can't. I can't say church and semen in the same sentence. I, I've definitely got to cut that one out. <laughs> You didn't even know you said it as well. Oh my god, I've got face ache. <laughs> right, I've got to cut that out. I can't, yeah, I, can't, I can't put that in. Right. <clears throat> Cheryl Martin. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> oh dear. Cheryl Martin, she says, I draw in church while listening to the music and sermon. I take a mechanical pencil and a very small four by four. <laughs> I said it again. Sorry, I'm not laughing at Cheryl's comments. Laughing at you. (laughs) Cheryl Martin, I draw in church while listening to the music and sermon. I take a mechanical pencil and a very small four by four drawing book and just draw who and what I see. It's very calming. Others see me drawing and it gives me confidence to draw in the park. Does it sound like I'm laughing there? (laughs) Yes. And I'm trying not to in the background as well. Oh, my gosh. Right. I'm going to try one more time, okay? okay? Yeah. (laughs) Cheryl Martin. I draw in church while listening to the music and sermon. I take a mechanical pencil and a very small 4 by 4 drawing book and just draw... (sighs) (laughs) Oh, crap. Not funny. Uh, uh, this whole pe- uh, this whole pencil thing's coming back. To- <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I, 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 maybe you should read this one out. Oh, it's hot read- now. Do you want oh me to try god. it? Yeah, go on. You you try it. <laughs> Cheryl Martin, I draw in church while listening to music and the certain. Oh bugger. <laughs>